Hi guys. Today I, I want uh, today I wanted to talk to you about uh, the forward converter. So let's start uh, as always with a, a brief of theory before jumping into a lattice spice. So what is a forward converter? The forward converter, the first thing that you want to do is so forward converter. It, it is a DC DC converter and especially it is a back derived converter. And uh, um at first glance, uh, it is used between uh, up to 200 volts, but even 300 volts power. And uh, you want also to use the forward converter uh, when uh, maybe when the flyback uh, doesn't allow you too much to go in higher powers. So how it is how it is made the forward converter? So basically, it is like, uh, as I said before, it is a back-derived converter. So let's start by using a DC voltage. Let's put just 20 volts. You do remember how it is done a, a back converter. So you have the inductance and you have the two NMOS here. Now, since it is an, an isolated topology, what you want to do is to put the transformer. So, we will maintain always the 20 micro at the end of the stage. You count a micro and your load. So, this piece here remains the same. Now, what we want to do is to put a transformer. So let's put a transformer and the two diodes needed for the rectification. Uh, especially, especially um, technically speaking, these two diodes here are not needed for the rectification, but they are used to uh, cut the DC, uh, to cut the, the, the DC voltage and to prevent the transformer saturation. You want, to you want to couple the transformer, so let's put K L2 L3 equal to 1, not as a, not as a comment, but as a spice directive. And now you want to put the switch. Technically speaking, there is a, a technique also to prevent the forward to, uh, to make the, the current of the transformer recirculate. So you actually you need another a tertiary winding, let's call it, uh, so let's put it L, L4, so that uh, basically with this uh, winding here, let me, let me draw it. Uh, so this branch here is to, for recirculating, current, recycling current. So as you can see, the, the big downside is that you need a tertiary transformer. And now let's put the low side switch. Let's put a, a real MOSFET. You can design the tune ratio n n1 over n2 and n2 and n1 over n3 but let's put everything to one just for example purposes since this is a loop, an open loop configuration basically the output voltage will be equal to n1 over so uh, transformer ratio times duty cycle. Since the transformer ratio it is equal to 1 in, in every case, we will expect that 
the output voltage it is equal sorry times <laughs> i forgot the input voltage times bin um okay it is almost co it is almost complete almost by the way this is an open loop configuration in this video i will made the open loop configuration then i can export the pi controller as well so let's uh, put the since it is an open loop configuration let's write open loop control and i will decide how much the duty cycle is to test the forward converter and when the waveform are correct we can think to put a ah, closed loop even with a pi controller Yes, you should use an opt-isolator because you want to separate the grounds, but I don't care because this is just an LT spice simulation. And uh, by the way, in LT spice you can't even put uh, a ground, uh, an isolated ground, so uh, forget that. Uh, so now let's write uh, the parameters: the switching frequency equal to 100 kilohertz, for instance, and the duty cycle equal to 0 0.5. So we expect that the output voltage will be more or less 10 volts minus the drop of the diode so let's put also uh, just this uh, i forget dot param fs equal to 100 kilohertz and dot param d equal to 0.5 that should be enough let's call it uh, uh, pulse and let's put it there so let's use the pulse 0 5 volts delay 0 Rise 1 nano, 1 nano, uh, let's put 10 nano, just because I, I want to avoid big di over the t. t on equal to d over fs, and the period equal to 1 over fs. Let me check, okay, input voltage, low side switch. Low side switch, this is the... Ah yes, let me let me uh, let me write, uh, let me draw that all of this here is the third tertiary transformer, and now we should be good for our testing uh, procedure. Let's run the simulation for five milliseconds and let's see the result. Okay, before skipping to the output voltage. Uh, let me check carefully the waveform. So, first of all, the pulse of the MOSFET. We expect that uh, the current of the MOSFET, uh, yes, will be a, a sort of triangular waveform. Okay, this is quite strange. Okay, as you can see, something is not working properly. Okay, because the uh, you have to you have to be uh, okay. I I discovered the the mistake. So uh, basically, the problem is whenever you use a transformer, you have to check carefully the dot. So, if the current is flowing in this verse, and uh, it is coming from the other dot, you should expect to... to have the correct verse. So now, as you can see, <laughs> it, is, it is working. You, you may think that, uh, no, it is a serious component, uh, it is the same. No. No. So always check your waveform before uh, before in doing some stuff because you will need it. Okay. So now what we expect at the secondary voltage. The secondary voltage is the same as the back. So so basically the switching waveform, let's call it uh, this node here, switch. The switching waveform should be sorry, must be between 0 and transformer ratio times v in so since we didn't since the transformer ratio for us is one we expect to 
to be between 0 and 20 volts. And as you can see, it is exactly what is going on. If I modify the, the transformer ratio, you will see that this voltage here is going to change, just because I, I changed the transformer ratio. But what you should expect is always a square waveform between 0 and uh, some volts. So uh, let, it, let, let it put again to 1, because I wanted to test also the duty cycle. As you can see, it is uh, 0 0.5 volt, as we expected. Now, so the first um, V switch is OK. And it has passed the test. Second test, diode waveform. So before uh, before uh, checking the inductor waveform, you should check the two, these two diodes here. During the T-on, you must know that this diode is conducting. So you expect uh, that the diode D1 is conducting. And, to, and together with D2, you see that these two diodes here, D1 and D2, sorry, D2 is conducting when it is the on, it is the opposite. D2 is conducting when it is the on, and D1 is conducting in the other interval. So these two waveform all together should compose the inductor current. Okay, don't be panicked because you have just to put a minus here. Okay, so it is working properly. The, 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 the two diodes are conducting and the inductor is uh, not so stressed because I, I have put a uh, very high inductor. It is working CCM, so the diode waveform is OK. Diode waveform is OK, and also, naturally, the inductor waveform is OK. So now let's check the output voltage. We expect the output voltage to obey this equation. So let me put just a behavioral voltage, and let's see how it is working nicely. Since the transformer is equal to 1, let's put just D times B in. I expect that the voltage here should be really close to this theoretical voltage. So let me run again a simulation and nothing is working because this node here is not called in. So let me call just in. Okay, let me check again the switch. The v switch. Um, I can't understand nothing anymore. So V switch is, is between 0 and 20 volts. Nothing has changed. Now let me check the output voltage. The output voltage is 9 volts. And the theoretical voltage is equal to 10. So you may wonder why there is this 1 volt difference. Well, the responsible are these two diodes here. So if you study the difference voltage between this volt node here and the node here, you will discover that there should be just, uh, 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 you see just the, you know, you can't see that, but uh, so you see that there is a discrepancy between the theoretical voltage with 10 and the 9 volt here. So in order to reduce that, just put Schottky diodes and that should reduce the drop voltage with respect to the silicon. Let's run again the simulation and uh, uh, okay, honestly, not so much has changed. Maybe the, the simulation is has even worsened because I have more spikes. So yeah, there is one drop voltage, still one drop voltage. It is strange, by the way, because I have put 0 0.5. So you expect uh, 10 volts. The switching ratio is between 0 and 20 volts, so should be correct. Okay, it is very strange, by the way. Ah, naturally, this is... Uh, Okay, uh, so the forward, the open loop forward converter is uh, basically complete. You can expect to work even like that. What uh, what we can do, what what we can still do is just to put a PI controller, which I made in previous video. I don't expect it to work so easily. Uh, I honestly don't expect to to make it work so easily. 
honestly because uh, it is uh, you have uh, to properly compensate these uh, so if i write cross loop back a converter with pi ah of course it doesn't take as uh, you know you can uh, use the API controller then you can use uh, um, so in my previous video I made uh, this control net which I can export here So basically what you are saying is that you are doing a, a closed loop con control by taking the output voltage, subtracting it to the reference voltage what you need, which is 8, which is uh, 8 volt, the switching frequency in the duty cycle, you don't set the duty cycle, but what you do instead is to, um, is to command manually With this uh, behavioral voltage here so let me put uh, just uh, the BV and this becomes the new pulse so what I'm doing so what I'm doing with this net basically is saying you have your DC DC converter and you subtract it with a reference voltage. You put a compensator and the compensator goes into a an op amp basically, which is compared with a triangular waveform. And this will generate a dynamic duty cycle to adjust the output voltage. So what you do in real converters is to set the reference and set the load, basically. So let me run again the simulation. Maybe it's not, it's not going to work so nicely. If it doesn't work, I will end the video and uh, just going on with it. Let me run. Uh, of course, it doesn't work because uh, let me close this. D over FS. Ah, no, sorry, because there is still this, the open loop control, so it wasn't... Uh... Let me cancel the... Let me cancel the integral. Because if the integral is not tuned so, so well, it can cause problems. Okay, <laughs> it is oscillating a uh, really lot because, okay, I removed the integral gain, as you can see, there is just the proportional gain, but it is working because, as, as you can see, the reference is settled. Uh, the gain is uh, really, really, really high, so um, without the integral, so I, I should tune, spend a lot of time in tuning the, this one, but we can just... Uh, we can just uh, uh, increment the simulation time and uh, um, we can just increment the simulation time. It will oscillate quite long, but as you can see, 
it is to, it is working with a so uh forget to control the cdc converter in this way so i will make a, a, a video in how to design the um, compensators because this is not the correct way but as you can see you set the reference and you find the output voltage after the transient to be exactly as you wanted and uh, it is still working more eff effectively than i could have in uh, than I, I could even imagine because i'm still near or what i wanted so as you can see the output the duty cycle of this is is changing dynamically according to the comparator output so the triangular waveform compared to parallel are all put all together and the output voltage is the transient is i don't know i do not like the transient but it is still a, a closed loop forward converter thank you for your attention guys the video is quite long but uh, hope that you hope that you enjoyed the video honestly i did not i did not uh, I did not expect to do also a, a closed loop converter, but since I, I implemented the control library, why not doing that? Then in the next video, I will, uh, I will, uh, I will simulate also the type free compensators so that we can make more beautiful, uh, uh, so that we can uh, basically eliminate this transient here. Thank you for your attention, guys. See you in the next video. Bye bye.